Alrighty, welcome back. So, part two of the basics. So, now I'm going to run you through this next drop down bit here. Now, this is what this, this view here with this grid is basically called drawing view. So, all this here is what we use in what's called a camera view. Now, I know it, it, it sounds obvious. Which is like drawing views where you draw bits, camera view is where you'd bring in other bits. But it is it it's really good how it does it, but it's it's not as easy to understand as you may think it is. So to get to be able to use these, you need to go over here to the right of your screen. And when you if you just hover over there, it just says drawing view. And if you hover over that next bit, camera view. So say say if you had different elements, so you had two different characters, and you click camera view. Let's just zoom that camera out a little bit. Then you'd use this bit to bring your characters. So in your drawing view, you could only focus on one character because you'd have one character on one separate drawing panel, and you'd have another draw another character on another drawing panel. So what you so what you do to get them both up is you'd go on camera view. So camera view is what the viewer will see when it comes to putting out your animations. So from here, so let's run through these these little things there. So this one will be able to select for you your animation here. So rather than being able to go into drawing view and moving that about. What it does is it just repositions this whole area, this whole grid here. So, so then you could just put one character there, but I mean, and then you could have another character there next to it, so they could interact. And then you can use your camera to move it around, and you can have them both sitting in within the frame, and you know everyone can see what's going on. And it saves you so much hassle and so much messing about. The next one helps you to adjust. So if you think, oh, my, my character there is a bit small you could go whoop, and make him taller or make him a bit more round, a bit more fat. Or you can make him small and squish him right down and make him really small like he's sat in the distance. Now, there's a better way to make him sit in the distance, but that is a bit more complicated. That's using that's looking at 3D, uh, 2D animation in a 3D world. We'll get to that later. And then you've got this to skew. Um... Again, you'd use this for say if you wanted to make your character move from this edge, from this screen to this part of the screen, rather than animating it frame by frame by frame by frame. No, sorry, I don't even know what I'm on about. <laughs> say if you wanted to make him spin round, then rather than animating it frame by frame by frame, is you'd have whoops, select one bit of the animation and you'd give him a start point, and then say if he was down here at 40 frames, and you wanted him to spin around there, then we'll go back to start frame, and whoosh, look at that. Spins around. And that was just basically going from the... So down at the bottom, drawing one, this is all the exact same drawing, get to the end, and you make him spin. Now don't worry about detail and think but yeah how did he do that he didn't really show me how to do it because i'm only showing you the basics for the minute i'm not running through any kind of how to do anything because we'll go I'll, I'll run through every every bit of detail with you once we know the certain tools also we've got a couple of other bits here but we don't really need to run into that just yet because when we get animating these ones the ones i'm showing you are the ones that you use use Right, so that's that bit. So don't worry about side view or top view just yet. We'll get into that. But that's using your 3D space. So now down here, timeline. Now this is where, so we'll go. We'll just switch back to drawing view. Timeline is where you'd have different animated characters. So here you, we've got drawing one, and there we've got camera. Because you can animate also the camera to like pan out and really add cinematic 
experiences for your viewers and you know really get them to be like whoa that was amazing if you look at some of my, my animations you'll see it in there you know you'll, you'll probably look at the animation and go shit what what's he doing he doesn't know what he's doing but you know i like to think i know what i'm doing um yeah so down here you've got all these extra added bits here so you can so on there you can add new elements or you can minus elements so say if you had a character that you didn't think you really wanted in the scene you could minus them out you've got more drawings you've got pegs now pegs are really really good for like i was saying before when i made a mistake is making the animation move so say if you had a say you had a sequence of an animator of a figure walking then you could go in camera view and once you've added a peg is you can make the animation go from there to there so then you just repeat that cycle of them running so rather than having to animate it animate it animate it where you move it frame by frame you can just basically do a, a quick run and he doesn't he doesn't have to move in the drawing view you can just make keep him in this one center bit and then when you go into the camera view is you add the peg and you can make a move across the screen which saves so much time um <clears throat> And then you've got here, you'll click on scenes. So you'll have different scenes for different bits. So to make your animations a bit more cinematic and a bit more la di da and a, ooh, rather, is you'll have different scenes. So you could have a close-up shot of him talking. Then you can have a, a double shot of two both characters talking to each other. So we'll get into more detail on that another time. So just have a look around on messing around with some of this stuff here. So if you go to plus, you've got drawing. You can add you can add images. You can add sound, which is obviously important. You can add peg, camera, media, drop shadow, which is really good. That that really adds some depth to your animations, and so so much you can do with all that. Um, and obviously you can name your drawings. So say if that was Jason's. Wing, winky you know say that that's what my winky looks like you could have that in there and that will be my winky for the animation and yeah you can add another another drawing so you had another drawing there so if i drew put in there another a blue circle with let's just go for yellow and we'll go to camera view. But hey, so from drawing view, like I say, there's your drawing, there's your other, cam uh, your other character into camera view, and that is your other animation. That's your other character. So you can select him there, and you can move him over, and you can select this character here and move him over, and then they're both in the frame, the the frame there, and then you could be talking, and then you can fit. Oh, he's too big. He, he too big. He should be smaller than that character. Make him smaller. Oh, he's too small. He needs to be bigger than him. You know, David and Goliath, and he's going to bum him. Yeah, bum him, yeah. <sighs> Sorry for my unfunny um, <laughs> unfunny sense of humour. Um, and you can add more cameras. Usually, you, you, I wouldn't really bother adding too many cameras because you can't, you can't flick. You can't flick between the cameras. You have to do that on the separate scenes. But you know that's toon boom for you <laughs> but our no, toon toon boom is really really good um yeah so i think i'll finish it on that note for this bit for part two and we'll move on to part three where we'll talk about this next bit here on the right so thank you very much latos potatoes <laughs>